Welcome to week one of the Data Management and Statistical Software Bootcamp, or something we affectionately refer to as the SAS Bootcamp. The agenda for this video is to understand uh, the interface of SAS and SAS Studio. By this point, in your SAS Bootcamp, you should have already gotten access to SAS on demand for academics and the software within that option, which is SAS Studio. So in this video, we are going to go over the user interface in SAS, understand the various components of it, how to write a simple sentence of code, and then how to execute it. So let me begin by sharing my screen. Uh, what I'm going to do for this video is actually show you guys both SAS as it functions on the regular desktop and SAS as it functions on, um, on SAS Studio. Let me try my screen sharing one more time, see if I'm doing it right. Okay. I'm going to open up SAS. When you open SAS on a regular Windows computer, and SAS is only available on Windows as far as I understand, this is what you see. This is the regular SAS software screen, and it, it looks a little outdated. SAS is a rather old piece of software, but SAS is very useful to do certain things, and we are going to learn through these series of videos how it accomplishes that. The primary things you need to recognize when you open a SAS window is that SAS has several windows within it, right? The first window you need to know about is this window right here. This is called the editor window, as it says right there. The editor window is where you write programs in SAS. It's where you compile a pro, it's where you write a program. It's, you can leave comments about your program. You can leave titles for your programs and all of your work is going to be limited to that window right here. This window above is called the log window. The log window right now shows certain notes that it automatically shows every time SAS is booted up. These notes refer to the license that you have installed on and so on and so forth. But the log window is actually where you look to see if the code you've written has been executed appropriately or if there have been errors in the execution of the code. Uh, there are many other applications that we can use the log window for. We'll learn more about them soon. The third window that I want to go over is the one on the left here called the Explorer window. The Explorer window is sort of like the folder explorer on a regular Windows computer. It's where you have your, uh, it's where you have your folders, it's where you have files within those folders that you can click on, so on and so forth. The Explorer window is how you access files through the soft software without having to leave the, leave the SAS operating system, if you will. Besides these three, there is also an output window, which is actually located right down here on the taskbar. The taskbar actually gives you access to not just the output window, but also to the editor and the log windows we mentioned earlier. And if you have multiple editors open, you have multiple program files or code files open, you will see them right down here next to the editor window. The output window was actually, if you click on it, you'll see that it's a full screen view. Uh, this is actually SAS's old school version of showing how results look like. These days, the output window, while it is open, is not the default setting for SAS results. As you run uh, any procedures in SAS that have an output associated with them, they are automatically open in an HTML uh, format, which shows up right next to this thing called the results window. And we'll go over that once we get there. Uh, this layout that you're seeing on my screen uh, is actually something that I prefer. You can move these windows around any which way you want upon the screen. For example, I can make my editor window full screen. That way I can see more of what I'm looking at. And I can, I can also see, I can make the log window full screen. It's just, that's not what I'm used to. What I prefer is to have my editor at the bottom, a log at the top, so that when I write and execute code, I can immediately see about what problems my code, my, my code might have had, what I need to change, so on and so forth. Now, there is also a results window in SAS. The results window is on the left right here. And the results window basically shows you uh, what are the things you can do uh, when, when you have results that are outputted, those are conveniently displayed as a drop down option that you can select from in results. We'll go more over these in the coming few weeks. So if you don't see what that is now, that's okay. Let me switch gears quickly now and talk about how, um, yeah, and let me, let me talk about how SAS Studio works. SAS Studio is primarily the software that we are going to be using for this class. Now, SAS Studio, to get access to that, you have to follow the instructions that I shared with you earlier. Uh, once you get access to it, this is what SAS Studio looks like. SAS Studio is a pretty neat piece of software where the creators of SAS have tried to simulate everything that is available to you in regular SAS within a browser. So it's incredibly powerful, but it has a few limitations over regular SAS. I have to go over the user interface within SAS Studio 
separately from SAS because it's not as intuitive even if you're a regular SAS user. So you've all seen now how the regular user interface looks like in SAS. In SAS Studio, first you have a blank screen and on the left here, they've simulated many things you would have if you had regular SAS. The first one is the server files and folders. This is similar to you having folders on your own PC or your computer, where within folders you might have program files, you might have data sets. All of those things are located within here where you can see that I have folders broken down into my content, my courses, so on and so forth. Now, you also have the libraries uh, tab on the left here. The libraries tab in SAS Studio is similar to the Explorer tab on the left side of regular SAS. And then once you, let me open up a, a program file because this is an example file that I've used previously in my study. This is stored in my folder within SAS Studio, so I don't have to open my PC's folders to show you guys this. This is what the program file looks like once you open something up within SAS Studio. Each program file has a task bar that runs at the top. So if you open multiple program files, they are displayed at the very top here, unlike at the bottom in regular SAS. And within each program file, you have a, you have a tab for code, you have a tab for the log, you have a tab for results. This is similar to the code and the log and the results folder, results windows within regular SAS. So this is the software that you will have to get used to over the next six to seven weeks as you try to learn SAS. The first things that I want to go over with, the next thing I want to go over with you is how programs work in SAS. When you open a particular program file, like this one that I have just opened for you now, this file basically is what SAS looks like when you start programming in SAS. And there are a few things I need you to know about general programming in SAS and general syntax within SAS uh, before we get started today. The first thing I want you to realize is that every sentence in SAS is everything you do in SAS can be written down. Everything can be written down as a program and the value of writing these things down is basically in that if you come back to your project a few months from today, if you come back to it a few years from today, you know exactly what you've done. So being able to program in SAS manually instead of using point and click if you're used to SPSS or some other software, perhaps Excel, uh, you'll see that those point and click options don't let you keep a record of what you've been doing. In SAS, because you're writing a program for everything you do, there is a written record. This written record is valuable because it allows for going back in history and looking at what you've done. It also increases accountability, making sure that you or somebody else working on a project has actually written the right programs and has done the right things in order to obtain the results that they shared with you. Writing program code is also useful for transparency. If you publish a project or a manuscript one day and the publisher or the editor wants you to share your code, you can share your code so other people can replicate your analysis. Having said that, uh, writing code in SAS may look daunting at first, but I promise you it is not very difficult. The, there are a few ground rules that I'm going to start you off with. First, every single SAS statement ends with a semicolon. You will see here my very first statement, and we'll talk about this libname statement later, ends with a semicolon. The semicolon signifies the end of a sentence in SAS. As long as you don't end a sentence with a semicolon, SAS will think you have more things to say and will keep looking for more things. This means that you can have as many tabs, enters, sentence breaks, spaces within a sentence as you want as a general rule of thumb, and SAS will not read them as errors. SAS will just think you've got more things to say and more commands to add to that, say, uh, to that statement itself. So every single sentence has to conclude with a semicolon. And I can tell you that you will forget to do that a few times and you will run into errors and you will learn from those mistakes. Uh, but uh, writing semicolon in SAS will eventually come to you as second hand and it becomes something you do without even thinking much about it. Next thing SAS conveniently does for you is that SAS actually highlights the program you write with different colors so you can understand what is going on within your code. Uh, this program that I'm showing right now is a good example of that. For example, the, the code on the left, these functions that are inbuilt into SAS are highlighted in blue or in, or in navy blue right here. And then the, the, any, any sentence you enter within quotes is, is uh, highlighted in this pink color, if you will. Uh, all green colored code is comments. Comments are things that SAS, cannot, SAS will not execute. So as you, write a, as you write your program files, 
you will write several things that are meant for SAS, but you will also write several things that are meant for yourself. These codes are for my future self. When I come back to look at this code and I don't understand what I'm looking at, those codes help me understand. So I will write these command statements, these comment statements, excuse me, to help me understand what this code is doing and what each step of this code is processing. Um, in order to write a command statement in SAS, you have to begin with a forward slash and an asterisk, and you have to end your comment with an asterisk and a forward slash. So the mirror, mirror image of what you started it with. As long as you do that, everything between those two characters will be, uh, will be read as a comment and SAS will not actually execute it. So you can write whatever you want in between those things. The other way to write a comment is to simply start your sentence with, a, with an asterisk and then end it with a semicolon, right? I have displayed, like I have displayed here. As long as you try either of these th methods, SAS will display these things as a comment, which is green in color, so you know that it doesn't have a problem. Now, as you're writing code, SAS will highlight these things with colors all by itself. You don't have to do anything, but it is a good way to identify if you are following appropriate SAS syntax or not. As a rule of thumb, uh, if the code you're writing does not highlight into the right colors like you would expect it to, that means you've got something missing. Maybe you've got an error, you might have a missing semicolon or something else like that. Now, this is a good rule of thumb, but I don't want you to rely on that every single time because as we go into a little more advanced SAS programming, you'll see that the highlighting is going to be a little off in some places, but don't let that convince you that you've got something wrong. So use it as a guide as you're beginning to learn, but don't rely on it entirely. That is it for this code today. The only other thing I want to show you guys is how to execute some programs in SAS, how to execute a sentence of program. And right after we do that, we're going to conclude this video and start up a new video. So in order to execute a video uh, code in SAS, you have to select the line of code that you're interested. In this case, I'm selecting a random sentence of code from my code file. And you're going to click on this little running man button right here. Now, if you are using the regular SAS feature, you would click on the running man button that is right over here. Let me open up a code file to show you guys how that looks like. So I'm going to show this example. This is a piece of SAS code or a sentence within SAS. And as you select this, you will see a little running man up here. If you click on that running man, you will see that SAS has executed it. You know SAS has executed it because a copy of that code shows up within the log along with a note about whether the code ran successfully or whether it did not. In this case, libref class was successfully assigned, meaning the code successfully ran. If you don't want to click on the running man, there is a shortcut within the desktop version of SAS. You just have to hit function F8. The function key F8 will do the same thing for you. In SAS Studio, I don't think F8 works, but you can click on the little running man up there and it should do the same thing for you. It tells you code's running. It, SAS automatically navigates you to the log tab within your program file from the code tab, and it gives you a copy of the code statement that you just ran and it tells you that the code ran successfully. That is all I have for this video. I'll see you all in the next one.